Welcome to another Cigar Advisor Cigar Review Panel Cigar Review. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor at CigarAdvisor.com, and today we are going to be smoking the CAO Bones Blind Huey. This is one of four selections in the new CAO Bones selection, and it is uh, a kind of a nod to the game of dominoes and dice, and um, it's uh, really kind of another kind of a treat that uh, we think you'll be interested in hearing about. So. Let's go to our delightful panel right now. Fellow cigar advisor, copywriter, and former au pair to the baby Yoda, it's Jared Ulick. I'm glad I wore green today. <laughs> and he'll debate you over semantics without being pedantic. It's managing editor, John Hulo. Gee, dropping rhymes. I like it. He's dropping <laughs> rhymes. We're 60 seconds into this thing. Anyway, hey. I got to tell you something, you know, these cigars, you know, they all have these kind of funky names like uh, Chicken Foot, Blind Hugie, things like that. Well, I did a little research and Blind Hugie and Chicken Foot are actually the names of domino games. You know, dominoes, there's a whole variety of games, just like cards that you can play with dominoes. And Blind Hugie yeah. is sort of like a uh, blind man's bluff. And I had a whole whole thing here, but in the essence of time, um, I'll just basically describe how it works. Um, basically, it depends on how many players you have. That depends on how many dominoes you get. And what happens is instead of having the dominoes up where you can see them, so you know where to, what to play, basically, um, they're not. They're, they're, they're down. So you don't know what you're going to be putting oh. out onto the, uh, the train, as they call it, until you're... Mm -hmm until you turn that domino over. So we each split up the dominoes, they're upside down. Um, one of us starts, and I think it's whoever draws the higher domino, and then it goes back in the pile. And then you turn, you turn the domino over, and then you pick, and you have to put them in a row, so it's organized. So it's, let's say it's a, a line, right? So left to right. Mm -hmm. So the, the domino on the left would be the first one you turn over if you go first. And then let's say it's five and two, so. So you would have the next domino would have to be a five or a two, so you could keep going. If it's not, then that's it. And then Jared would go or Don would go, depending how much we're playing. And he just keeps going like regular dominoes, but you know, you don't know what's coming up and you have to just keep turning. This combines okay. my my two least favorite things, blindness and rules. <laughs> 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 So, well, so this, so is this, is this called Blind Huey or Blind Hugie? This is Blind I guess it, I, I call it Blind Hugie, but it might be Huey. I don't know. What are you going to do? We'll figure anyway. it out. It's a, it's a fun game. And, and I, I love dominoes. Okay. And um, I've not played that game. I usually just play, you know, what I call straight dominoes or, you know. Yeah. Well, dominoes. I don't know. At, 50, at a 54 ring gauge, I'm going to call this Blind Hugie. So this is a pretty <laughs> is big a huge scar. Game. Anyway, let me get to the blend and then uh, we'll get on to some other stuff. Once again, this is the CAO Bones, Blind Hugie. It's a six by 54 Toro, and it has a four year age Connecticut broadleaf wrapper on it. It's a beautiful looking wrapper. It's nice and oily. And uh, the binder is a US Connecticut shade. So that's interesting. And then the filler is a combination of Honduran and Nicaraguan and Dominican. It's like a three play there. So you have Honduran Hamastron and Honduran uh, La Entrada, Nicaraguan Esteli, and then of course Dominican Pilato Cubano. And these are presented in boxes of 20 cigars. They're also in five packs and singles, if you, know, if you like that. And uh, this is well under $10 a cigar. It's, it comes in at about $7.99. That's MSRP. So a lot of cigar for the money. And uh, I guess Jared has some information on the brand itself. So bring it on, Jared. Yeah, so you, you touched on it a little bit. Uh, it gets its genesis from, you know, the game of dominoes. But I actually like to go back and look a little further because, you know, if you look at what CAO has been doing and what they're really strongest at, uh, uh, last year we had Session, right, a Maduro. And if you look throughout since the, since the booms come out, they've, they've had this, this strong suit of Maduros that they've released. And... On these last two, with Session and now Bones, 
Rick Rodriguez is uh, always touting that it's like the good time cigar. You know, smoke it, relax with your buddies, sit in the garage or whatever you're doing that, you know, is just going to relax and take your mind off of, you know, work. Now, this year we have COVID, all the politics, news, everything. It's just a cigar to just take you out of the moment and bring you into a little bit of respite. And, uh, but yeah, so like you said, all of those sizes are different, I guess, variants of the game dominoes. I don't know anything about dominoes, so I'm not even going to touch on that. Uh, but I know when we were talking a little bit off camera, you had mentioned something cool you noticed about the band that I didn't yes. notice at first. So if you could touch on that. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, while we're doing that, I might as well just tell you that this cigar, at least in my case, and you guys can chime in if you want, but it's very well packed. It's got a beautiful oily wrapper, as I mentioned before. It has a kind of a dark chocolate color to it. And what I do is I cut the cap down at the shoulder. So when, when I have a cigar like this, a 54 ring, I just find that I like to get as much, you know, um, available tobacco as possible um, from, the, uh, from the head of the cigar. So, and also, yeah, the band is really cool. If you just look at it like this, like, you know, when you're seeing now, it just looks like a black band with a chrome border. But if you look at it under the right light, you can see these dominoes in there. And I think they're actually embossed a little bit too. It's yeah, they are. To tell, but it's a very, very cool uh, design in that way. So I, I like that. Yeah. I that was cool. yeah. So anyway, um, while I was uh, lighting up, I did a little uh, test on the pre-light, which gave me a very kind of a leathery and salty pre-light, cold draw, whatever you want to call it. And I lit it up and it lit beautifully and I'm still getting a little bit of salt and um, kind of a woody, woody note, stuff like that. How about you, Jared? Yeah, for me, um, I'm not getting any of that salt, but I am getting, uh, I am getting that leather, uh, leathery taste. So maybe that's kind of coming into yeah. play a little bit, but for me, it's this, these two very prominent notes of leather, like I talked about, and this roasted coffee, almost like black coffee. Uh, really? yeah. So it's just got, uh, and I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not super heavy or anything like that. It's just, you know, very nicely balanced. Uh, but it doesn't have, uh, really any type of, um, for lack of a better term, grittiness to it. It's just, it's very smooth yet, you know? Mm. How about you, John? Well, the interesting thing is, is, uh, you know, I, I'm about, uh, the better part of half an inch or so into the oh, cigar. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, you know, some of the flavors that you guys are tasting on the pre-light, you know, a, a couple of them carry over to the beginning uh, of the cigar. Uh, although I found it to be a little more earthy as opposed to leathery, but I, you know, that's, that's kind of a, your mileage may vary situation, a <laughs> uh, little pinch of pepper, but I definitely found the same kind of coffee, coffee bean sensation. Uh, that Jared was talking about, but what was really kind of neat is that, and I didn't notice it on the pre-light, although there was a little bit of sweetness there, uh, that when you start getting in like the first, you know, the first couple of rings of ash, right, there's this kind of slight sweet, think like, um, like a black forest cherry cake, like that cherry, dark black cherry liqueur kind of it, it's dark, it's sweet, not sweet like a raisin, not sweet like, it's like almost like a liqueur. And it's, so it's kind of got this edgy sweetness to it. And it's just lingering in the background. You may not even notice, but I hope you do because it's, it's a nice find. Hmm, interesting, because um, I don't know, I'm not getting any of the coffee yet, although I will admit on the sample that I smoked, I did get a little coffee, but further in, I didn't, didn't get it that quickly. And I am getting a bit of that, like, uh, I guess, a dark chocolate kind of a element in here, too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad, Gary, that you talked about the sample, uh, because uh, this is a cigar that we've gotten probably more to sample of than any I can remember. Uh, we had probably a mother load of like 10 to 15 cigars dropped in our lap, which is not a problem at all, <laughs> you know, but what I found is that it gave me this unique perspective of being able to, to try these cigars uh, in all their different sizes and in, in mass, right? So the one thing that I found is that it is super consistent throughout sizes and throughout each blend. And I think that gives people a lot to look forward to because, you know, nobody wants to open a box and get a cigar and then they take out the next cigar, it's a different cigar, and they take out the next cigar after that. 
completely different, you know, scenario. You want to have a consistent experience, and I can attest at least for the you know eight to ten or so that I've had already, absolutely is. Well, I'll 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 give you this much. Definitely, I mean, I've smoked a few of the uh, chicken foot too, and you know they are consistent in terms of the flavor profile, the character of the cigar, and I'm finding it to be kind of medium bodied. It's it's very creamy, and I'm getting that kind of a nice sweet note underlying there, you know, in, in the smoke. Uh, like I said, it's kind of like a bitter, bittersweet chocolate. It's not like a sweet, sweet. Um, and anyway, JP, anything in particular strike you about the cigar other than, you know, just black cherry and... If you look at a lot of the new cigars that are coming out right now, there's there's two buckets that are being created by that cigar makers are, are putting their stuff into, right? You have... Um, them filling it it's it's the, the first bucket would be all the full body stuff you know like the uh you know full body full strength and like even in just in the past few weeks you know um diesel esteli has come out to melt your face and agonorsa has come along flexing with uh, a new uh, lunatic and then onyx bold nicaragua hair on fire aj fernandez booms you know you know, coming, kind of coming along to, you know, part your hair in mysterious places. You know, Macanudo is getting in on the action with the Inspirado Green. Um, Cohiba wants a piece. Might even try and take a scalp or something like that, you know. But nobody's going out of the way to choose the bucket in the middle, except apparently Ricky Rodriguez, the CAO, because, you know, he just did CAO session, Jared, like you had said. You know, that's another broadleaf Maduro that's in this vein. Uh, CAO concert, if you guys remember that. Was, that's, that that's a different rapper. Yeah. It's a Habana, but it's a Maduro. You know, it's in this bucket. Kind of just medium body, a couple of different, you know, it's kind of, so he's working with a lot of medium body Maduros. And, you know, as Jared said, it's kind of the, you know, it's forming their, their kind of go-to, or if you want to call it the backbone of, of what he's been doing for a while now. The blends are a little bit different, you know, uh, from from one to one, like the uh, Consigliere is a Brazilian Maduro, but it's medium body, you know, again, and it's Nicaraguan tobaccos, and, and it falls in this sweet spot. Brasilia is the outlier. I mean, that's still, you know, a, a test of, you know, your ability to handle a full body cigar for many, you know, but, you know, and I think the bones, if you really wanted to pick a direct comparison, if you remember the La Traviata Maduro, this to me, with a lot of those flavors, it, and it, it's that it's that sweet spot uh, of medium bodied that m it's just a hint of sweetness. It's not gritty, but it's a it's a thick mouth feel, nice body. La Traviata Maduro had that bones has found it again, uh, especially in this in this size, and um, you know it's 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 not that they're doing anything crazy or off the reservation, but he's found a formula and it seems like he's sticking to it. And this one is, is keeping true to that sweet spot that I think that he's carved out. Okay. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, what he did with the flathead, you know, like the uh, V554 camshaft, something like that, but, it, but with a little more bass than treble. I was going to say, like, if you, had a, if you had a flathead that wasn't as full bodied, this would be... Very close. Very close. Yeah, so I, I'd probably put, I'd agree with, you know, I'd say Flathead is kind of, it's more Brasilia than I think right. it is Bones. Okay, um, really? Okay. It just, just flavor and body wise, it just kind of seems, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, um, Flathead is up on a pedestal. You know, mm -hmm. this is kind of more, let's hang out and smoke something. Yeah. Right. And that's actually the idea. Right. The cigars too. It's just kind of a hangout, kind of have fun cigar. Um, but you know, I, I'm getting, um, I'm getting, you know, it's funny. I'm getting a lot more spice right now from this cigar. Yeah, it's, it's kind of spicy, and but I'm still getting that, still getting salt, and I'm still getting that little uh, hint of leather through there. So the leather and the salt, and that bittersweet chocolate, seem to be consistent. But it's this just. Um, Seems a little bit spicy up front here. Any, anybody a little further down? Has anyone anything different to say about it? For me, the, the, 
the chocolate flavor, I, I, uh, I noticed that it has that baking chocolate flavor that you're talking about. But for me, it comes a little bit later on. It comes a little bit later on. And I love that because every, everyone, uh, you know, uh, experiences these cigars differently. And I, and I love that everyone has a little bit of a different take. But I get that, that savory note a little bit later on, too. But it, it just kind of like slightly builds in sweetness. I, I wouldn't say it's like a night and day from first half to second half. But to me, it's a cigar that's a tale of two acts. It's got that leathery, for me, roasted coffee note up front. Uh, and then it has that sweeter chocolate and savoriness toward the end. And I wish yeah. I picked up that uh, that black cherry that you are but I, I just, I'm not getting it. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, so what's interesting you know, is, yeah, go ahead. It, what's interesting is it's, I find it especially pronounced just at the very beginning, because after that, it kind of fades away. And, and now, you know, it's, you know, the farther you go on, you're finding, no pun intended, to see some meat on the bone here. And it's just starting to pick up a little bit in, in body and, and a touch of strength. It's still, it's still medium. It's just starting to, you know, edge towards, you know, the, the, a little bit up on the upper level. Yeah. But the pepper and earth are starting to go away. And I think as you smoke this a little bit longer, you'll find that it's replaced by some cedar. Uh, you know, very woody, almost yeah. oaky aroma, and, and and that's really when those dark chocolate, almost like bittersweet chocolate notes, really yeah. start to take hold. You know, it's what's interesting. Uh, I even noticed, and it's not on every sample, so it's kind of like a hit or miss once in a while. But like toward the center of the cigar, I get this like zesty. You know, people are going to probably think I'm a you know I'm just shilling at this point, but it's like this very faint little bit of almost lemon pepper zest you know like but you know how like lemon pepper is super pronounced it's in your face it's, it's really there so imagine if that was just the flavor without being in your face and that's kind of what it's like you know but i haven't gotten it on this one but i've had it on probably maybe like two-thirds or at least half of the samples you know yeah now i tell you right now i'm just getting past that first you know First act, or well into it, I should say, and it's burning really nice. Jared, anything strike you about the burn and the the ash quality for the cigar? Yeah, that's something else. Uh, you know, I was talking about consistency before, and it's been you know a consistently well constructed, well burning cigar throughout too. Um, it's very very breezy today, uh, so I have a little bit of a uh, you know a little bit of deviation here, but. I, uh, you can see that the ash is holding well. It stacks very nicely. I've already broken it off once, uh, but I, I really can't complain. Uh, it's, it's burnt. I've never, I haven't had to even relight one of them. So that's a plus. Yeah, that's true. I had never had to relight this. Right. This cigar, and all the, you know, the several samples I've smoked. I think that's one of the interesting things, especially about that, considering, you know, Broadleaf, especially being such a thick, oily leaf. And these, this, I mean, this is a really oily looking cigar especially, you know, as you're noticing before you light it. And and it's just, you don't have to mess with it. You know, it just <laughs> burns and it just does its job. And, you know, there's no touching it up. There's, in my mind, yeah, it's breezy here too and it might get a little off track. But, you know, again, it's not going to stray so far as that you have to start torching one side and torching the other side and playing catch up. You know, it, it burns really well for such a, a thick, leathery wrapper to, to, to stay on track that well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll t I tell you, as far as the uh, flavor profile that I'm getting so far is basically it's medium. Maybe this is even medium plus a little bit, you know, in this size. And again, leathery, woody, a uh, little chocolatey in a dark chocolate sense. And a little bit of that coffee is kind of sneaking in now a little bit, yeah. but, um, but as a, as a whole, you know, it's, it's just a very well balanced uh, mix of flavors and they're all really nice flavors. You know, I don't yeah. think it necessarily needs to be a complex cigar, you know, whatever. Yeah, I um, agree. It's, it's not a complex cigar or at least overly complex. And that depends on your definition, right. but you know, I, I, I think it, it, you know, I've talked often about how, it's okay to not be complex. And this is a perfect example of, I'm just going to enjoy it. It might have four prominent flavors and that's fine because they're four really good flavors. Yeah. 
And, and you know, if you look at the blend again, you know, you've got this, these two Honduran leaves in there, then you got the Esteli Nicaraguan, which kind of gives it some punch. And then Dominican Palato Cubano, which kind of balances all that out. You know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, there may be more things, you know, uh, developing in here than maybe we even notice because we're talking about it so much. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's a, if you love Connecticut broadleaf, this is a great example. And uh, Jared, how about the retro hail? Did, did so, you agree with that at all? <laughs> yeah, so the retro, um, the retro, I get some kind of like this nut, uh, not nutty sweet, I'm sorry, that's the aroma. Uh, this peppery citrus type of uh, sensation. So the pepper kind of kicks up a couple notches if you are of the emerald uh, emerald persuasion, I guess, you know, bam or whatever. Uh, On the emerald scale? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it, it, it goes up, but it's, again, uh, I, I like cigars that don't burn out my nose, and yeah. people don't really think about it often, but your nose is an important part of your palate, and it's a very sensitive part of your palate. It's easy to get burned out. You know, if you have a pepper fest, it's just gonna, it's painful. You don't, you don't really enjoy the cigar. And this has none of that. It's like a, a very smooth kind of pepper, and it's got that little bit of citrus element to it that I just really like. Yeah, you know, I picked up a little, only a little bit of pepper, but I am getting that little, just a little tangy, fruity note. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there. Yeah, it's there. How about you, uh, JP? No, you know what? At this point, I'm kind of noticing more of the coffee, more of that subtle bittersweet chocolate, uh, a, a, a very woody. Uh, it's kind of more oaky than cedary. That's kind of, you know, so I'm, I'm not sensing that same kind of thing. But, you know, the thing is, I think part of it is I'm pairing it with uh, iced coffee right now. So that, that may be why everything seems to be falling in camp coffee so heavily uh, as far as the flavor goes. Um, but you know, I, I think, you know, this is, this for me is a good choice. It tastes good with a broadleaf Maduro. I think if you were going to drink anything else with it, um, you know, it's a pretty versatile smoke. So if you look at anything that has tasting notes that include the word vanilla, um, because this is a little teaser, there's a, there's a point at which you get about halfway a little farther. There's this mm -hmm. vanilla spice kind of characteristic that comes along. So um, you find yourself in possession of a bottle of Woodford. That would be nice. Uh, if you can't do that, um, you know, tin cup will do. Uh, I was, I'm not really a beer guy, but I would say, you know, a stout, like think Guinness. Uh, and that, you know, I've kind of lost my taste for that style of beer. But, you know, I could see that somebody who enjoys it would love smoking this while drinking one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, if you find yourself having more of a proletarian liquor cabinet like me, you know, <laughs> you know, even just like a scotch and soda would be fine. I mean, you could, there's a hundred things, yeah. there's a way different ways you could go with this. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'll go I'm ahead. pairing I'll mine with um, very diluted iced coffee. <laughs> <It doesn't laughs> taste. I, mean, I think the coffee from what I made this morning was still a little warm in the milk. But anyway, Jared, what have you got? All right, to, so to start way. this off, I got a question for both of you. What is okay. the best type of icing to put on a chocolate cake? Chocolate. Chocolate, right? Chocolate on sure. chocolate. Yeah. Bang it. Okay. <laughs> you know? It's a chocolate puro, baby. So <laughs> the uh, infamous Yingling uh, Hershey's chocolate stout. Look at that. Or, I'm sorry. I just committed a sin. Chocolate porter. My apologies. Chocolate porter. You had, you had stout in my head. <laughs> And let me tell you guys, okay, putting this chocolate on chocolate, and I don't want people, this is not like alcoholic chocolate milk, okay? This is kind of on the same vein as the cigar. It's light chocolate, like uh, almost like infusion in the background. And this pairing is to borrow a phrase from the 90s, the bomb. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is just, just killer. Uh, I, have, I, I don't think I've had a pairing that I've enjoyed this much probably ever and that's really? and I, i'm being serious you know this this hershey's porter thing that has taken the internet by storm uh mm -hmm. is not is not like i said it's not this like overly chocolate thing it's nuanced chocolate um and it's okay. like a very dark like uh, you remember you had that uh a couple months ago gary you had that like 75 percent cocoa stuff yeah. 
it's yeah. it's more like that. It's like okay. got that bitter chocolate taste to it, you know, mm -hmm. that goes really well on beer. And they just complement each other, smooth each other out, and it's just smooth sailing. Mm. Well, I think I would agree with John in terms of uh, what I would pair with this, if, you know, alcoholic wise. Um, it would probably be like a, like a bourbon, but may maybe a sweeter bourbon. Or um, yeah, I, th I think you know. I think he's he's hit it on the head when he said, "I think it goes with just about anything." I, I'm just gonna say, man, you got you got so many different directions you could go with this. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not like you have to sit there with you know your test tubes and your Bunsen burners and your beakers and try and scientifically isolate <laughs> the perfect combination. I mean, this is seriously grab whatever's in front and you know because you know you like it and pour a little of it and spark up one of these and i think you'll be just perfectly happy yeah All right. i'm telling right, you well. I'm, have a, I'm gonna have a care package sitting on both of your desks and uh you're gonna you're gonna thank <laughs> me for it well i think it's time for another taste check um jared what are you getting flavor wise at this point so as i said before um it right here this is I'm, I'm about exactly halfway mark oh uh, yeah you're ahead right of me. right on the money it's starting to get sweeter it's starting to get uh a little bit uh you know with a little bit of, of um the savoriness and i don't know maybe that's what maybe it's like we're polar here you know like i'm getting some of the salt toward the end you were getting in the beginning uh but uh it's got this like baking baking chocolate with uh, like a salty savoriness right now I agree with that. John? Yeah, you know what? I think that's really, if you're going to talk about a base flavor, you got to mention the chocolate is one yeah. of them. Um, you know, you got to mention the cedar, I think, and a little bit of the pepper, uh, uh, even though they're more background. Well, the pepper's a background, the cedar is a lot more obvious. But it's, it's right around here, too, that you're going to start seeing some of that vanilla spice. And it's not like, like no, don't think like vanilla cream, like vanilla oh. ice cream or something. Like, yeah. Think like yeah, like vanilla extract. Oh, that, okay. It's not powerful. It's yeah. subtle, but I think you'll notice it. And it's and that's why I say if you're going to pair something with it, you know, why not grab something that has vanilla and the taste listed on the label as a tasting note? And I think you know that that kind of makes it easy. Mm. You're making me want to root beer float right now. You know what? That could really be good. Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, I, yeah, that's the other thing. Everybody always talks about bourbon this and scotch that, and whiskey the other thing. And, you know, uh, Dr. Pepper. A coffee would be fine. Yeah. You know, why, we really want to be crazy. Make a little Irish coffee and get away with one of those. You know, hey, but, that would be but really go good ahead. with this. Yeah. I Irish coffee you know, is, is a natural. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, try that, especially as, as the nights get a little bit colder. Um, you know, or, or, uh, you know, you could even probably get away with, with, a uh, like a mold cider that might be interesting, mm. you know, Not you really want to really want to expand your repertoire of, of stuff to try, you know, this is, this is a good base on which to build. Somebody's I opening think. the cabinet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a mull wine with just a pinch of cinnamon. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking. I think I'm going to have one of everything. Right. Jared, who's the yeah. cigar for? Um, look, I, I promise you guys, this is not me taking the easy way out. But I really think this is a cigar that's kind of for everybody. Um, you know, I don't think you need a ton of experience for it. Maybe a little. Uh, but I don't think that this is something that even relatively new smokers would need shy away from you know uh but uh, i think experienced smokers too will find again especially if you're a maduro fan especially if you're a broadleaf fan that this has a lot going on for a pretty reasonable price tag so to me it's kind of like if you're a maduro nut kind of a no-brainer uh but you know as Bull always says your mileage varies but it's kind of for everybody it really is yeah. well i'll tell you this thing just opened up like big time yeah. yeah, and it's just I'm getting a lot more of that nice creamy smoke and stuff, and um, I think uh, this might be a good time to give our final thoughts on the cigar. So um, I'll start. Uh, I, I I find that this is a very smooth, very relaxing cigar. 
It's good for the, uh, I'll, I'll tip my hat to Jared. It's, I think any smoker at any level of experience could really appreciate this cigar. Um, and also, I think it really, it's, it's all about the wrapper. I really do. I've smoked enough of these now. I think that he really built this blend around the wrapper because I'm getting a lot of that nice, you know, natural uh, bitter sweetness that you get from a good Connecticut broadleaf and it's well balanced. I mean, that's, how about you, Jared? Um, really for my final thought, I'll, I'll say that broadleaf in my experience is something that's very easy to mess up. It's very easy to make a cigar with broadleaf on it that just falls flat and doesn't taste good. And hmm. lucky for you guys, this is not an example of that. So, you know, <laughs> it, it really isn't. And, you know, to, to give my shameless Pennsylvania plug again, rush out and get that yingling chocolate porter and get one of these things and try them together. And if you don't like it, then grow some new taste buds or something. I, I just don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's excellent, you know. All right, John, take us home. Final thoughts. And every, and every time Jared says Yingling chocolate porter, Dick Yingling <laughs> sends him a dollar. <laughs> now it's a dollar twenty-five. <laughs> I need the bell. I need the bell. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah, whatever the bell. <laughs> Bell's locked so, away you know, somewhere. We've we've talked yet yeah, it's in, a, it's in its museum space. <laughs> we we've, we've talked in the past about um, it, this is what I would call a talking cigar. Okay, as much as how we're talking right now, we're just sitting here, you know, you're gonna smoke this and you're gonna go blah, 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 and you're gonna hit on it, you're gonna talk some more, and maybe it's even gonna go out on you because you weren't paying attention to it, and you're gonna relight it, and you're gonna keep on puffing away on it because it still tastes good. And then you'll nub it. Maybe depending on how much longer you want to hang out with everybody talking, you're going to smoke another one when you're done with the first. Uh, it's just that kind of an easygoing, medium bodied, very smokable, decent amount of body, plenty of smoke coming out of it. Um, good level of flavor uh, as opposed to number of flavors. Uh, the only the only thing I would say, you know, I mean, we've been at this, I don't know, better part of however long and it, it does burn a little on the quicker side. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think you could probably, you know, make a good time out of the, out of the larger sizes, especially, but if anything, you know, again, like I said before, a CAO bones, it's that Maduro medium bodied sweet spot that Rick Rodriguez has been after for a while, straightforward, honest smoking Maduro. And it just plugs right into the, have a drink, have a smoke, relax kind of uh, experience that plugs right into that space just fine. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the CAO Bones Blind Huey. And let me tell you this, that you can find the CAO Bones selection at famous-smoke.com. And if you want some more cigar reviews, advice, and news, follow us at cigaradvisor.com. And you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and our Instagram page. And of course, on YouTube and our YouTube channel. We would love you to follow us and like this video. Okay, so that's all for now. And we'll see you at our next Cigar Advisor Cigar Review Panel Cigar Review.